are the few examples of how anti malware scan interface can be used to detect anything malicious now uh, let's uh, the main thing uh, some of the bypassing methods is um, basically what i'm going to be showing you guys here is the byte patching uh, basically when whenever like uh, uh, the session is running so what happens is that the for example the ams size scan buffer right so we byte uh, we patch that byte in that function so that the function is corrupted and whenever it tries to use that function it won't be able to use that function because uh, the function itself is corrupted right so basically i'm going to show you guys that method uh, some of the other methods are PowerShell downgrade. Uh, basically, in the older versions of PowerShell, AMSI was not there, so we can use that to bypass AMSI. Uh, we can encode the commands, uh, base64, uh, and decode it at runtime, basically by, uh, bypassing the AMSI. We can use word parsing, like uh, there's an example here, divide the strings into multiple bytes and that used to bypass the AMSI. Uh, the newer technique, I believe it's not new, but relatively new is hardware breakpoints, in which where you uh, put a breakpoint on that function that detects them anything malicious and basically calls some, calls some other function instead of the function that is detecting, that is used for detection, right? And the byte patching, which I'm going to show you right now. So let's move on to the demo. So basically guys, I'm going to be using uh, WinDBG in this uh, scenario. And here I have the old PowerShell, PowerShell session that I opened. Let's attach the debugger to this uh, process. So the PowerShell process. To attach to it, let's see, let's verify whether the AMSI was injected in this or not. Right, so here we can see that the AMSI is being injected into this process. So, hmm. So one question I believe you guys have in your mind is that how we know which function is being used to detect it, right? So there are multiple methods which you can uh, use to determine which function is being used by Windows in order to detect that malicious activity. But in this case, uh, there's a Microsoft documentation that basically says that the AMSI scan buffer is used to uh, detect the malicious Welcome to Global Information Security Society for the Professional of Pakistan Assalamu alaikum everybody hope you guys are doing well uh, Basically, first of all, I would like to thank the JIST community and Shahzad Sabani Saab for giving me this platform to present uh, in front of you guys. Uh, not present, basically, but uh, record this session for you guys. Hopefully, you guys uh, will find it fruitful. So, also, let's begin. Uh, basically, today, the topic uh, is uh, bypassing AMSI protection statically by using a debugger. Uh, basically, I did this uh, bypassing a few years ago. Uh, so let's begin. Okay, and the table of contents are the introduction. Uh, what is AMSI? I will go through the working of AMSI, how it works, and which application uses AMSI, and how uh, we can bypass it statically by using a debugger. And in the end, I will show you a demo. Um, I will uh, use uh, a script that will show you guys how it can be bypassed. Uh, basically, it's written in PowerShell. 
so i will show you that as well not just the debugger but also i will uh, give you the script or the command that bypassed it in windows 10 okay so let's begin so who am i basically my name is shan mohammed nayani i'm a senior information security consultant in a consultancy firm here in saudi Arabia. i'm very passionate about cyber security i do malware researching which involves development and analysis i'm an aspiring uh, exploit developer and i love reverse engineering all right so this is a little brief about me moving forward okay so let's begin uh, basically what is msi uh, the msi interface or the anti-malware scan interface is a windows feature that obviously detects and prevents malicious program from running but um, also antiviruses and edrs so basically uh, antiviruses and edrs using uses uh, msi anti-malware scan, scan interface to detect any mal malicious activity right uh, how they use it they basically integrate the msi into their own platform and they uses uh, msi functions uh, to detect any malicious activity right so amsi basically it's a dll that is uh, given by uh, microsoft and it is already uh, in the system it's already present in the system and the external third party uses this uh, dll to detect anything malicious right so basically uh, amsi uh, is integrated into power popular uh, scripting languages such as like powershell javascript uh, also dot net applications like c sharp binaries etc etc right so uh, basically i want to sh uh, let's i want to describe how it works so whenever we start a powershell session or any program the amsi.dll is automatically injected into that process right and uh, whenever we run anything malicious it uses windows apis to detect uh, whether the command or that uh, specific instruction is malicious or not right so msi basically has uh, more than three function more than these functions that are shown here uh, but these are the main functions that uh, basically detects the malicious activity right so I will show you the other functions as well but we are going to be focusing on these uh, three functions so basically what uh, amsi open session does it's, it's that it initiates a session uh, so basically what amsi open session does is that it it is used to initialize a new session uh, which basically used for content uh, scanning right and uh, basically whenever we start a powershell session or any others uh, other programs it basically uh, creates a new session or initializes the amsi right so secondly we have amsi scan buffer uh, the basically the main purpose of this uh, amsi scan buffer is to scan a buffer of data like such as uh, in memory buffer right for anything malicious or any uh, suspicious content that is being provided to it to any program right so for, so for example if i uh, start a powershell session and then uh, i write anything suspicious it will detect it automatically right so i can show it to you as well just a second okay so here basically i have a, a powershell session that i have opened up now uh, i want to see whether the msi.dll is, in, is injected or not so for that i use process hacker and if you search the process here by going to powershell opening it up going into modules you can see that the msi is injected into this process right so if i write anything uh, malicious for example uh, invoke mimicats right so it was blocked now this was blocked by the amsi right and it's not even like a proper script it's just a string that is saying invoke mimicats it's it's not even the whole script 
right but it basically blocked the the string as well right so so basically this is how we see uh, whether it's uh, injected or not right so moving forward um, this is basically uh, the old uh, bypassing that I did and you can see here I have used uh, WinDVG in this case right and it's showing that the AMSI.dll was injected into a PowerShell session right so uh, which which application uses AMSI right so basically Microsoft Office uh, because because it has the uh, the scripting mechanism uh, you can define a macro anything malicious in that script engine and uh, execute anything malicious so that's why microsoft has integrated amsi with the microsoft office right and windows script hosting which leverages uh, languages like vb script and javascript before execution powershell like i showed you uh, this uh, the amsi was injected in the powershell session as well and mostly windows defender and third party antiviruses and security software uses these uh, uses this um, amsi api as you call it to detect anything malicious right so these are the few examples of how anti malware scan interface can be used to detect anything malicious now uh, let's uh, the main thing uh, some of the bypassing methods is um, basically what I'm going to be showing you guys here is the byte patching. Uh, basically, when whenever like uh, uh, the session is running, so what happens is that the, for example, the AMSI scan buffer, right? So we byte, uh, we patch that byte in that function so that the function is corrupted, and whenever it tries to use that function it won't be able to use that function because uh, the function itself is corrupted right so basically i'm going to show you guys that method uh, some of the other methods are powershell downgrade uh, basically in the older versions of powershell amsi was not there so we can use that to bypass amsi uh, we can encode the commands uh, base 64 uh, and decode it at runtime basically by uh, bypassing the msi we can use word parsing like uh, there's an example here divide the strings into multiple bytes and that used to bypass the msi uh, the newer technique i believe it's not new but relatively new is hardware breakpoints in which where you uh, put a breakpoint on that function that detects them anything malicious and basically calls some call some other function instead of the function that is detecting that is used for detection right and the byte patching which i'm going to show you right now so let's move on to the demo so basically guys i'm going to be using uh, windbg in this uh, scenario and here i have the old powershell session that i opened let's attach the debugger to this uh, process so the powershell process and to attach to it let's see let's verify whether the msi was injected in this or not so here we can see that the AMSI is being injected into this process so so one question I believe you guys have in your mind is that how we know which function is being used to detect it right so there are multiple methods which you can uh, use to determine which function is being used by windows in order to detect that malicious activity but in this case uh, there's a microsoft documentation that basically says that the amsi scan buffer is used to uh, 
uh, detect the malicious activity i will share the link with you guys let me open it up uh, real quick in just a second so basically this is the microsoft documentation that they have and in here these are all the functions that it uses and as you can see here the amsi scan buffer it basically scans full of content for malware so this is the function that i'm going to be targeting so basically a little introduction uh, about the windbg windbg is basically a debugger that is provided by microsoft and you can use it to debug any application so uh, what basically a debugger does is that you can go through all of the instructions and you can see which APIs or which functions are being executed. And it shows you that in very detail, uh, showing the disassembly of that function where you can go through uh, the whole function line by line. Right? So you can put a breakpoint on it. You can basically change the instructions. You can see which uh register has which values right so this is basic functionality of a debugger so here i'm going to be putting a breakpoint on the function the anti-malware uh, the amsi scan buffer function right so when we run the program basically g is oops has some issues mm. oh, okay. I think it got disconnected let me connect it again so I think PowerShell just got closed uh, let me open it again Okay, I have opened up an other session of PowerShell. Let me connect to it again. Let's put a breakpoint on that function. Buffer. Okay. okay, I have opened up an other PowerShell session. I don't know what was happening. Let me attach it again. MSI, let's put a breakpoint. MSI scan buffer. G. Now it's working. Okay, so so basically, what I did is that I put a breakpoint on the MSI scan buffer function. Uh, I un un assembled it and this was the output. This was the instruction that it's going to use in order to detect the malicious activity, right? And I took this address that was the beginning of this function and I changed it to a return instruction. So I basically patched the bytes. I patched the memory function and corrupted it so that whenever AMSI scan buffer uh, windows function is called it just returns the call it doesn't do anything it doesn't move forward with the instruction that was there before right so basically bypassing the function by corrupting it right so let's test it and clear out our breakpoint run the debugger Let's see. Okay, so I walk, mimic ads. Now, as you can see, we have successfully bypassed it. Right? Previously, it was showing that uh, there was a malicious activity and it cannot uh, move forward with that instruction. But now it's, uh, it's basically not detecting that. Uh, let us verify this. Let's open another PowerShell session. I will show you here. Let's run the same thing. Invoke. Mini cats. 
and here it's just detecting the malicious string right but in here it's not detecting basically bypassing the AMSI so this method is known as byte patching right so one thing I want to mention here is that uh, which type of detection mechanism does AMSI uses so it uses signature based detection right uh, I'm sure most of you are aware of the signature based detection so uh, basically what happens is that whenever we give a, a malicious script or any input it takes that input or that is string or that command and it searches in its wide variety of database which contains the signature and it's going to match those uh, signature with, it, with its database and if it finds anything malicious is going to send the security alert right okay so one last thing i wanted to show you guys is the is the automated script uh, basically you can find a lot of scripts on the internet the internet is full of those these type of scripts but uh, just an example i can show you one of the modified scripts uh, it was written mainly for windows 10 so here i have a windows 10 machine i've opened up the new PowerShell session let's check we have msi enabled it is enabled let me grab the script real quick okay so open up a new session open that and let's say disabled let's check it that's and here you can see the AMSI is successfully bypassed. So now what this script will do is that it goes through, uh, it searches for AMSI DLL, uh, searches for the AMSI utils, and then it searches further the functions that are used to detect, and then it's going to corrupt that function. And after running this uh, script or this command, you can see we can successfully bypass the AMSI. So I want to show you guys like which how we can determine which functions are being used by any DLL. Right. So in this uh, example we had the Microsoft documentation that basically said these are the functions that are used by the AMSI DLL. But in a case where we don't know which functions are being used, we can use the dump in utility. Right, so if I run this command dump in dot exe and it and give the option exports and give the DLL name, we can see that it outputs the name of the function that the DLL contains. Right. Similarly, there is another program called uh, dependency walker, and then we can input the DLL in that program, and then it's going to show us. Uh, the functions that the DLL uses. And here we can see the dependency walker. When you provide the DLL, it's going to give us the function name. Right. So that's how we can determine which functions are being used by the DLL. So this concludes our session for today. So this concludes our session for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the session. If you have any uh, questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, here is my LinkedIn link here. Also, I do uh, researching and I try to post my research online on my personal blog. Feel free to follow this uh, link and check out my researches. Thank you so much, just community and Shalas Vanisab for giving me this platform.